Well, if my day couldn't get any worse, my Honda is as rotten as a pear. Hi guys, Lee here, welcome back to the channel. And you join me today, we're gonna to go have a look at one of my purchases. It's a 2006 Honda CRV 2.2 diesel four wheel drive that I have bought for 500 pounds. Now I bought this off a trader friend of mine, ooh, about six months ago. Uh, he came into the garage one day, he does buy and sell me the odd car. He does trade me the odd car now and then, offered me the CRV. At the time I was a little bit busy, so I just sort of looked, quick look round it. It didn't seem expensive to me for 500 pounds. I went, yep, yeah, no problem, I'll have it. He got parked up round the back and basically abandoned there. It's now all the tires are down on it. The battery's flat. It's covered in moss and all sorts. It doesn't look in great condition. It doesn't look in great shape, and it needs pulling out and rectifying to s and sorting out. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have a quick look round it, pull it out, get it going, hopefully get the tires all inflated on it, and then from there we can work out what we need to do to it. Now I can't actually remember what was wrong with this car, why I parked it up in the first place. But now is the time to do it because it's winter. Uh, it was really snowy and icy last week. Four wheel drives in winter always sell. The prices sort of get artificially inflated so this is the perfect time of year to be selling a foot cheap four-wheel drive so in a way probably leaving it for the songs probably helped but you know we have that added problem that by leaving it for so long we may have caused other issues we've been stood still for a while so we need to see what condition and state it's in and see if we can get it sorted if we can get it for the workshop get a list together go from there get it for an MOT we should hopefully have a car we should sell pretty well uh, and make a little bit of money out of it I think there's quite a bit in this which I'll explain more in a bit so let's go and have a look at it first I'll show you what state it's in uh, and hopefully try and get it running again okay there she is guys the, my abandoned CRV um, it's a 2006 plate 22 diesel uh, from what I remember it wasn't that bad but it's been laid up for so long now I have generally forgot lots of moss and leaves all over we've got definitely got a flat tire this side yeah she that tires uh, ghost it's gone completely flat or cracked at the bottom and the tires pretty poor anyway so we're gonna need a tire on it a few little scuffs and marks on it I can't remember the mileage we'll have to pull it out and see but from what I remember it's, it's gonna be big it's gonna be 130 40 50 foul I'm sure if it was low I'd probably remember but you know it is what it is the, these Honda diesels are actually quite good the um, other than the odd timing chain issue they're usually quite a decent engine to be fair I don't usually give them much jet uh, spare tyre on her, it's pretty clean round here, we've got a few little marks on it, you know, scratches and that, a few little touch-ups here, you know, it, it, it's in okay condition for a car that's done probably big miles and, and it's just an old, an old four-wheel drive, it's what, for a car that's not 17 years old now going on, it's not a bad little thing. Um, inside, be moulded to be fair but it isn't it's pretty it's not too bad actually but, uh, we've got some tinted glass at the back so uh, you'd probably make a car this right so we need to, basically what we need to do with this now is pull it out of there uh, get the jump pack on it get it started see if it starts okay uh, once we've done that uh, get the tyre inflated and just basically before we do anything then just go for a quick drive around the yard we can't go on the road on it but we can drive around the yard and get a list together of what, what needs doing to it because I, I, I generally can't remember I, in my head I'm thinking it might have had a wheel bearing problem or was it an ABS fault I, I, I don't know I can't remember I'm guessing so we just need to get it out and uh, go from there and see what we need to do to it and then we can see hopefully if we can turn it around get it in the workshop and hopefully look to get an MOT on it that, that's the that's the outcome we want clean it up and then see what we can try and get for it so I'll go get one of the lads now we'll uh, dig it out get it started and see what we're up against right jump pack time for later got a rook of Honda keys here not sure which one's for this one, so. Key number one, a fail. Key number two. Oh, yes, we're in. Oh, God, it smells in here. It's like it's been used for, I don't know, like a gardener or something. I don't know, it's, it's, it's messy anyway, but the seats aren't ripped or anything like that. We've not got looks of damage or trashed interior it just wants a bloody good clean but anyway let's get it going in fact let's just I cannot see this folk having any power in the battery at all I'll be amazed if it did no flat flat is out
keep running first. I'm gonna put the tire up because because I'm gonna need the running to keep the tire inflator going. Uh, that battery looks way undersized for that car. Uh, that's not good. Right, we're gonna need to replace that because that's not the right battery for this. Clearly, let's get a jump back on it. Right, we're on. This may not start because this jump pack is quite old and it's not at its best and this battery's undersized. Wow, we've got 166,000 miles. It's diesel and it's a Honda, so it's probably nothing for a Honda. Um, that's more than I thought it was. I thought it had 150, but it doesn't really matter to be fair for what it is. Oh. Nope, nearly. Is not the right battery for this, this is too underpowered. Let's give it a bit of heat. No, that's not, that's no good. Um, right, plan B, get another jump pack or some jump leads I think. Right, back in the room, we've got another jump pack on there now, so Pretty confident this should go now. So. Yes, there we go. Fires into life. Sounds okay. Should really rev it up with a jump back on, but seems okay. Right, we'll leave that for a few minutes. Um, just so it doesn't go dead if we take the jump pack off. We've got no diesel in here at all, so I'm not sure how far we're going to get with this. And we've got an ABS light on. That might be because the battery's been completely flat dead. We'll have to drive it in a minute and just see. Uh, if that goes out, hopefully if it, once it's moving it might pick up a bit of voltage and go out but if not we're going to need to address that uh, we've got a stereo working, code needed for the stereo great, so we'll have to sort that out uh, cool box, oh, I'm locking wheel nuts in the cool box keep it cool uh, heating, we're working yep, we've got uh, heaters working, that's good we've got a manual down there is there anything in this? Well, there's the stereo code, I think. 25132. It's likely to be the stereo code. It's good. Honda navigation. Hasn't got navigation. Authorised dealer list. No. Now, we haven't got a service book, to be honest. Logbook's in here, all part of a logbook. Now, these are just old green slips. I think we've got the main logbook in the office. We've got a few invoices. Generally, just MOTs bits here oh no rear brake shoes wishbone arms uh, shocker another shocker pump dual pump rubber mm. right we'll have to go through all that it's quite a bit there to go through Let's see if we can find uh see if we can get some history together for it i mean it's sounding all right now it's been running for what a minute or two yeah, it seems okay let's have a quick look Yeah, not too bad that, I think. Usually these 2.2s, two they're quite reliable. I've had a few with noisy timing chains, it's quite common. Um, but to be fair, it's very prominent, usually here, and that one's not too bad, actually. We're getting there, we're getting there. I'll get away from that noise for a minute. Right, tyre's going up, luckily. Um, obviously, we're going to need to sort that tyre out, that's knackered. But, um, and the battery as well, battery's tated. But I'm going to go for a run in it first, just round the yard. Uh, make sure we've not got any major faults, like the engine's okay and it's um, we've not got any clutch issues because it's a manual. Do the basics and then we'll look to sort of uh, start work on it, get a list together what we need to do with it and work out uh, if it's worth saving or not. Hopefully it is. So, a few more minutes and we should have it pumped up. I'm just glad I'm not pumping it. Remember the old days we used to pump them up? <laughs> Thank God for 12 volt uh, electric pumps, eh? Oh, right. Finally. I like the handbrake here. Ooh. Good that. Right. Oh, brakes released. God, this hasn't been moving about seven months, I think. Oh, great, can't go that way. Someone's blocked it off. Let's go around this way. Oh, there's noises, there's bangs, there's creaks, there's brakes that are. Uh, 
a little bit uh, rusty. But we're going through the gears, all right? Clutch is okay. Can you hear that? It's got to be the brakes, that, that much corrosion on the brakes. Pads are probably all sticking together as well, and the calipers and sliders, everyone's just banging around. Press the brakes now, listen to this. Oh, horrible. Even the pedal has a bit of sponginess in it then as well, where it's trying to... And then the brake pedal, a bit of sponginess in it then, where it's all sort of pushed against everything. These brakes are probably going to need a good clean up, maybe need replacing. Right, we'll go down here, it's private. It's got a private road down here, we can't go on the main road of it, but... We can do a few circles. Well, that brake's horrendous. We've gone over the poles there. I've not really got much suspension noise I'm hearing. It's just all brakes. You're just hearing that rotation going round of constantly catching. ABS light's not gone off. I'm not surprised, to be honest. Yeah, I'm just getting a little bit better as I clean them up. To be honest, I think I'm going to need to drive round this and just um, keep hitting them brakes. Got a little bit of notchiness in the steering. Um, so we can just demonstrate that. Move it on lock to lock. And there's a little tiny bit in the column there. Um, let's have a quick look at that. Uh, it's not too bad. It's not much play in the actual rack itself. It's just notchiness in the column. So, as long as it hasn't got excessive moving, which it doesn't look like it has, you'd still get through an MOT with that without having to change it. But, you know, it's, um, it's just annoying, really. But, little can hear that or not it's only slight but uh, I don't really want to be putting a rack on this if I can help it so what to say about it well I can't really go on the road so I can't really get a full assessment but I think it will clean up all right I mean I can sort the brakes out brakes and nothing we've to put new brakes on it's not the end of the world ABS lights on might be the battery causing the fault because the battery is not right for it wrong size and clip terminals aren't on properly I suspect it's probably an ABS sensor, so, you know, I mean, that's not the end of the world either, it's not, it's not exactly a big, big costing. Um, I think really what we need to do now is, is get it, a battery for it, sort, source of batteries. I might have an old used battery around that will just do the job for now temporarily, until we get it fixed and then we can put a new battery on it and all that. Um, and then get it in the workshop, get it up in the air, check underneath because we need to make sure we've not got any corrosion or anything like that, or if we are, we're going to have to deal with it and work that out. Um, jack it up and give it a shake as well, see what's going on with the suspension. And then try and get a list together of what's definitely going to need doing to it, and what the likely costs are going to be, and what we think, or what I think we can possibly fetch for it. Because I'm only sort of guessing at the moment what it's worth, but I mean, I've got an idea of about 1,500 quid in my head as a, as a ballpark minimum. Let's get it on the ramp, get up in the air, and make sure it's not got a rook of tin worm. Okay, well, it's an old Japanese car, so we have got quite a lot of rust under here. To be honest with you, most of it is just surface scaling rust, like original salt peeling off. The only bits I've sort of found that are, look at that there, <laughs> it's just like top layer. And you actually hit it, it's actually quite solid, but it just looks really scaly and horrible. But um, I have found a hole. There is one boot weak bit here. We've got, uh, you can quite see that. There we go. We've got there, what? Two inch hole, maybe. That's how you've cut and welded it. You can probably move this out of the way. And we're going to put in a plate here. Um, that's pretty much all I've found, to be honest. I mean, the rest of it's just, just once, it's just scaly and brushing, but it's solid underneath. Um, that's the only bit I've found, really, on the welding side. Um, and it's not too bad, I don't mind doing a little bit of welding occasionally. Even the diesel cat on this is all the shields are gone and someone's put a clip round it's a bit rattling. And it's not a particularly nice thing this, the steps are all a bit crusty as well but 
again they're not structural it's just part of the stepping area mm. we want two tyres definitely that one's knackered it's gone down anyway so that's been driven flat probably so it could be knackered and also the treads uh, on the bars same this side you know that's on the bars as well so we're not putting two tyres on it uh, quickly jack it up I think rusty front spring but it's not broken or anything so to be honest with you, the front end is pretty solid to be fair I mean rusty spring on the opposite side tyres are knackered brakes are clearly uh, need cleaning up badly they've not got much of a lip on them actually either they've, they've not been long put on they've just been left for so long they're just obviously crudded up and they just need really to sort of drive around for a few miles really just to clean them up so i think that's probably what we'll do with that put some diesel in it we just have to just keep driving around the yard until we get them cleaned up and hopefully then once we've done that and we've got the faces clean strip and clean them properly then uh, we'll see how we go if not we'll have to obviously budget in discs and pads for it but we definitely need tires we definitely need to do plate welding um, we need to do something to tidy up that underbody really, I mean it's all surface corrosion, I don't know how far you want to go with it, we could try and brush it up a little bit, why brush it and maybe hammer it, flick can it shorts it, just make it a bit tidy maybe, is it worth doing, I don't know to be honest on a car this age, you expect rust, it's already set in so I don't think it's going to make much difference sort of structurally, it's probably only just going to make it aesthetic look a little bit better, I'm not sure where to go with this one, I think we need to establish its value, uh, where it sits in the market now uh, and once we've done that work out if I'm going to repair it and get a rough idea of costings so I'll go and have a look at that now uh, and join me in a few seconds right so I've looked online been looking at the numbers I've had to establish two things one is what we're going to get for this car and the second one is what's it going to cost the first thing we looked at obviously was the values to be honest with you pretty on the ball really with the value I did have a look on the trade, a look on our eBay and stuff like that just to get some, some pointers and to be honest if you're 1500 quid, which is what I mentioned earlier, is about right for this car. Um, there is a few bits and bobs that are above it but they've got a bit low mileage, this is a bit scruffy in places as well so I think 1500 would be achievable but I don't think you get much more than that even if we managed to get this sort of rectified and through an MOT and, and sort of run it up and running again. So that's the potential value of it, we've paid 500 quid for it, what's it going to cost me to repair this as a rough idea? The job so far that I've picked up on, we definitely need two new tyres for it. We definitely need a rucker welding doing. We definitely need a new battery because it's not the correct one for it. Um, and I haven't got, unfortunately, I haven't got a used battery lying around either that will fit the job. So I'm going to have to put a new one on it if I do obviously go to sell it. Uh, we need to put an ABS sensor on it. Um, it's, I've scanned it, it did come up with an ABS speed sensor on the near side front needing source now. So it's probably a dead sensor on it. So we're going to have to address that as well. Obviously, we're going to need to service it. Um, we're going to need to sort the brakes out. The fronts are okay as and they'll clean up. They're actually starting to clean up all right. I think you're just driving it around, we'll clean them fronts up and then give them a proper strip and clean. That will probably resolve them. However, when I had it on the ramp, I actually looked a bit further into it later on and I actually noticed that one of the back brakes, the driver's rear, is completely C solid. It's actually the pad is jammed in on the disc uh, and the pad has actually gone right down to the metal. Now that's probably happened because of one or two things. Number one is either the pad is actually stuck in the carrier so it's got all fouled up, it's stuck in the slat in the carrier and it's just jammed against the disc and sort of worn it down. Uh, the other one is potentially a caliper's actually seized up because the pad on the near side is absolutely fine, it's got loads of meat on it, it's, it's the driver's side that's defective uh, and causing that problem and it's gone down to the metal. So it's had one of those two things, probably a seized caliper, they're very common on these because calipers seizing up on the rear so you know we have to factor that in as well, we could be definitely going to need to put rear distance pads on it and then obviously we're going to have to put a rear caliper. And then obviously once we've done all that, We've got to address that major issue, which is the welding. Um, to be honest with you, looking at it further, it's quite a lot. Um, now, it's doable, don't get me wrong, but it is a lot of welding. I mean, and you've got to work this all out cost-wise. Tyres are going to be probably 80, 90 quid for a set of tyres. Another 80 quid for a half-decent battery, because um, the diesel is quite a big battery it uses on it. We're going to need... Uh, we're going to need a service kit for it, an ABS sensor, that's probably going to be about, about 60 quid. The service kit's going to be about 25, 30 quid with the oil, set of rear discs and pads and potential caliper. We're really going to be getting on the way to the 8 to 900 quid before we even got this welded up. And the welding's what's really worrying me. Now, I'm not afraid of doing a bit of welding. I'm, I'm quite enjoying doing a bit of welding. Now, I have been looking a bit closer at that welding, and to be honest with you, I think we're going to be opening up a Pandora's box of problems there. Once you take those seal covers off, 
it's going to be absolutely rotten it's going soft all along and even though it's only a couple of inch holes at the moment we've got two of them on that near side sill time we've sort of took that cover off and ground them all back we'll end up with a hole three or four foot in length we'll end up basically putting a sill on it or welding a sill and then we've got to fabricate new steps and the brackets for them because they're all going to fall off because they're all rotten and also it looks a bit closer and the fuel tank itself the clasp shield if you like that holds it all up that's all rotten away and falling away as well uh, and that's obviously could potentially be quite dangerous because nothing that makes the tank not secure it, it's just not in good shape so then we've got to sort out that fuel tank issue get it all secured back up properly so we'd have to sort that fuel tank issue out and then at the time we welded it all up i mean you could easily spend a day and a half doing all the welding on this and at the moment i really haven't got time spending a day and a half welding in fact if i was going to spend a day welding anything at the moment it'd be my recovery truck which has been off the road now for about a year um i mean we're constantly welding it up doing bits and bobs in between jobs so i'd rather focus my efforts on doing something like that than trying to weld this up even though there'd be a bit of profit in it even if it ended up costing us a grand we still have about 500 pound in it it's a lot of work just to get uh, a, you know a reasonable margin which we can get out of most cars we sort of get in anyway um, and basically what i'm trying to say is there's probably better cars to focus our energy and attention on rather than this because this thing is quite badly rotten and you just know once we start working on this there'll be other things that will come along it will turn into a bigger list more expense it'll be around for weeks or months really haven't got the space at the moment so it's probably not the best car at the moment to be tackling so i've decided even though there is a potential margin of profit in this it's just not worth getting involved with to be honest with you it's absolutely pointless it's just going to cause a massive headache for me going forward it's going to slow me down take up more space and it's been here for six seven months anyway taking up space so we've, in effect we've probably lost money on it anyway because it's took up a space for something else that i've not been able to take in or stuff that i've got other places that needs to be brought here it's just, it's just there's a massive space issue i have at the moment i need to clear some of the dead wood uh, and i think this is one of them to be fair the, the plus side of it is a scrap value i actually put this in a couple of comparison sites and i got a quotation close to 450 pounds from one of the comparison sites on there so i thought do you know what for 450 quid it'll free up some space we get some cash back in uh, and we just move on you can't win them all at the end of the day guys you know we i don't buy every car thinking i'm going to get money out of it i have to accept sometimes that they're going to buy something that's going to be a lemon or it's just not what is your first thought but it just goes to show how quickly the numbers can go against you things can get out the budget can go out of control and if you start going down that route all, that's, all of a sudden you can find yourself spending lots of money and basically getting nothing back and losing a lot of time in the process and your time is valuable at the end of the day as well so this is not one for me i don't think there's any real other opportunity for it i don't think putting an auction is going to get us any much more money because it's got no mot uh, i don't think it's worth putting on ebay I had a quick look on their spares and repairs they're doing 600 quidish mark and then you've got to take fees out of it it'd just be easier to get rid of it and just scrap it and just move on free up a little bit of space so unfortunately this one guys reluctantly it is going to scrap yard in the sky um it's not for me to be fair this is the first one we've had on the channel we've actually lost money on you know it does happen now and then you know I, I, it doesn't really it doesn't really bother me that much because the others make up for it but i'm really it's lesson learned i should have dealt with this months ago realized what the situation or the car was and got rid of it early on so thanks for watching this one guys uh, please check out my other videos i've got new stuff landing every week Please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you all very, very soon.